Okay, so I'm going to try and update our calendar so we can delete our class from last year and we can add our new students this year. So go to Connect Ed and log in. I have my password saved. Um, so you're going to hit log in. And then you are going to see your dashboard here. You want to uh, click on the Wonders Grade 4 Teacher Edition. And then up top, um, oh, it looks like there's a new dashboard too. Okay, so the layout's a little bit different. Up top, you want to do manage and assign. And then where it says class details, you'll see um, the tab is already highlighted class details. And these are my kids from last year. Double checking, these are my students from last year. What I want to do is remove this class clicking OK will remove them OK so they're going to remove this class so all those kids are gone and then it takes you automatically to the setup wizard so you're going to create a new class I like to change the the year for my class name so Miss G room 8 2000 oops 2018 2019 Grade level four, simplified login. That would be for kinder, first grade, and second grade teachers. That's giving your kids the option of selecting like the banana triangle number four letter A password. Otherwise, um, they will have to log in with their student email account and their um, their password. I believe it's student one for uh, Wonders or Connected. I can double check on that. Fourth grade and fifth grade, we definitely do not want to click on that. Third grade, it's totally up to you. I know some of you used the simplified uh, login last year, um, but if they already know how to log on to a Chromebook, they already know how to type in their um, their email address, which is the first part of their login anyway. So I'm going to leave this box blank. You guys can go ahead and click on that if you are um, the lower primary. Go ahead and hit next. Our first teaching day now I am going to select the calendar I know that this first week of school I am not going to hit on curriculum and I will probably start the 20th so I'm going to click on the 20th all right hit next now I go in and it says um, we can select what our non-teaching days are for our lesson plans. So we want to look at our calendar. Okay, we know that there is no school on the third. They already blocked out that date for us. Um, if you know that you're not going to teach instruction on one of the days, you can go ahead and do that. Um, I also know that we have a uh, back to school night on the 4th and the 5th. So maybe since there's no school that Monday and you have back to school night, maybe you're not going to be doing any wonders curriculum on those days. Otherwise, you can go ahead and unclick them this way. Um, the 21st, we also do not have school because there's parent teacher conferences. There's minimum week, but that shouldn't interfere. Looking into October, there's a non-student day on the 8th. There's also the fun run on the 19th. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select that day just in case. We have Red Ribbon Week coming up. Then we have the character parade on the 31st. That's going to be a non-teacher day. I mean, a, a non-curriculum day. And then the November 1st, the kids aren't there. So I'm probably going to block off that whole week knowing that I want to skip that week for curriculum. All right. Keep going. This whole week is our Thanksgiving break. So I'm going to select all those as non-teaching days. Okay. Going in to December. They only have Christmas um, blocked off but we are actually on Christmas break the 19th is our last day there's no way I'm teaching wonders that week so I'm gonna go ahead and block that off all of break 
and keep going. These are all non-teaching days. The kids come back on the 7th, so we should be good there. 21st, Martin Luther King. All righty. For um, first grade and kindergarten, the January 31st is the 100th day of school if you want to click that one as well. All right, looking into February, we have the 11th no school. We have the 18th no school. Okay, March, we have parent-teacher conferences, but that should be fine. Spring break is the week of the 25th. No school here. Okay. April, we have a non-student day on the 19th. Non-student day on the 22nd. Okay. And then SBAC starts here. So I'm probably going to mark off this week as well. S back. S back continues into this week. And this week. All right, and then we have open house. And it's up to you if you want to continue after that. But I'm going to click uh, save. You could always go back and edit your calendar if you want to. Now, one of the things that really um, confuses people is setting up your calendar. So the calendar used to be on the dashboard. If you move up to plan and you see calendar here, select calendar. Now scroll down. And they have a start with that smart start week one, week two. Now, I plan on digging into my first story this week. So what I actually do is you uh, select the drop down box and you could either delete a lesson block, you can move it, you can condense it. I am going to delete this lesson block. Okay, so as you can see, things look nice and neat right now. But if I'm going to move into the next month, and I come across one of those days where I added a non-teaching day, you notice the entire week carries over and then it bumps everything off. Now, personally, that really irritates me, especially when the kids log in and then the material doesn't line up online. So what I like to do is on the last day of this week, I am going to hit condense lesson block. I'm going to choose day five to remove. I select OK. And they now know that that was a four day week instead of a five day week. And that way, the next week, everything is still aligned. I choose to do one um, lesson week each week. So everything is kind of lined up. So if you move into the next month, you may have to do the same thing. See, this one's crazy. That would drive me nuts. So I'm going to look at this blue week and see that it carries over. This is another four-day week. So I'm going to click on this blue day. Once again, I'm going to go to condense lesson block. I'm going to remove the fifth day of instruction. And now it made it a four-day week. Same thing here. Condense. Remove day five. And I always like to remove day five because day five is usually all review. And the only reason why I keep this calendar updated is because when kids log on to Connect Ed with their account, all the vocabulary lines up, all of the assessments line up, and they can access the materials for that week. And if you don't keep this online calendar up to date with what you're doing in class and you ask the kids to log in online, it will not you know, line up and correlate with what you're actually teaching. I found that out the hard way. So now I always make sure each week kind of lines up neatly. So far, so good. Yeah, there we go. So you can continue to do so. And vice versa, if you're like, you know what, 
this one right here, powerful words. I, I know for us that that is a huge unit on um, Martin Luther King Jr. Maybe instead of condensing a lesson block, I am going to expand a lesson block. Maybe I'm going to add another day after day four. Maybe I'm going to go in and just carry that on for two weeks. And maybe I'm going to do it again. Expand the lesson block. Maybe I'm going to add a day after day five. And I'm going to continue. So you could always make a block last two weeks instead. Um, I just personally like to make sure that everything lines up. I start a unit you know, at the beginning of the week and I end it at the end of the week. It just makes it easier for me. Um, but you could always go in and do that at any time. Um, once again, it's from plan, calendar, and that's where you drop down. Now, that our calendar is set up, you're going to go back up to Manage and Assign, go to Class Details, and you'll notice that my class is right here. It has given me the new name with the new uh, school year. I don't have any students. So if I look a little lower, it says Plus Students. You are going to select Plus Students. You think it's easiest just to type the kids last name, first name and last name if you're looking at your roster. So I'm going to try my first one and I hit search and I'm looking for Ava. Okay, so select Ava, save. Ava is now on my list. And then I'm going to do that for every single kid. Okay, let's try another one. Search, Ethan, save. And then I'm just going to work through my list and go ahead and I have to manually add every single kid. So that is the best way to get your classroom set up. I hope that helps.